25. I'm just going to read a few verses, but I'll read verses for the pins too far. Bible says, let this mind be in you which was already in Christ. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point even of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on the earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. We've been spending these past couple of weeks and we've been talking about truth by revelation of who we are, where I, I, our identity lives, right? And who God has said we are and how even when we come to the understanding and the revelation of who we are in Christ, it is a hard journey that we still have in front of us to manifest that identity fully in the earth because there are so many different circumstances that are fighting against our belief of who we are because we look at our circumstances and situations and they seem to contradict the word and so it's hard for you to believe who you truly are when you're looking simply at what you have in front of you that if you were to stop in this moment and to look at yourself through your behaviors and through your mistakes and through your character and through the choices that you've made, you would put yourself next to Christ and find that there is no comparison. And so who, how could you possibly be who he has said you are? And when I read that scripture and it says, let this mind, be in you which was in Christ the, the, the first question that pops up is what is the mind that was in Christ which mind did he have what was the manner and the way that he thought and then how does it seem to contradict the manner and the ways that we think when the Bible says that in, in, um, that, that in Romans 12 that do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What it is asking you is to go from how you think presently to how he thinks. And that even your thoughts would align not with your earthly revelation or understanding, but it would come to an understanding that aligns with that of God the Father. The first thing it says after this is that not considering it robbery to be equal to God. And if I'm to, to take from that, it would sound immediately like I'm being blasphemous. That What are you saying? But the mind that Jesus had did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Bible says in the book of Isaiah, do you not know that ye are gods? That in actuality when God looked at himself and he made you, he was bringing an expression of himself into the earth that if he is God over the universes, he called for you to be a God in this earth. But it doesn't ask then for you to be prideful because the next thing that he did was even though he considered it not robbery to be equal with God, he had a capacity.
generosity within himself and a graciousness within himself to humble himself to the position of a bond servant. To say, I, I see my uprightness, my righteousness, my cleanliness, my purity, my goodness. But even then, I will take on the filthiness of the human posture. What mind is in you when you go through your different circumstances or situations? How do you see yourself? A lot of us walk in false humility and it, 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 it's not real humility because you're humbling yourself based on a perception that isn't even really there. What you're considering humility, it was never humility in the first place because even when you're walking through this life, you never considered yourself worthy. Never considered yourself good enough. Take a second. Center our hearts, O oh Lord, right back to you. To what you are saying, what you are doing, what you are calling out of us, who you are desiring for us to be, what you have purposed for us. The word that you desire for us to receive, that we would change us, it would enter into our hearts. And that our hearts would become a soft, fertile ground for which your word can take root. Align this moment, this circumstance, this situation. Bring us back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I was thinking about this. We had a conversation a few weeks ago after, after the service. And a lot of things I heard people say. But sometimes it, it, doesn't, take into situ it doesn't take into consideration the life you're living. And the weight of the circumstances that you're going through. Sometimes it sounds like something good to hear, but you don't know how you bring an activation to that word when you go through your life. One of my favorite scriptures is when the Lord says, The Bible says that the Lord resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And then there's something integral here. It says, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. This brings to mind that humility is not what we have always considered humility to be. Humility is not lowering yourself when you enter a room when there's actually something that you have to say. Humility is not carrying a posture that appears to the world as meek when there's actually influence that you're meant to have in the room that you're in. Humility is, is coming under the hand of God and trusting what God has said. Bible defines and describes Moses as the meekest man. Moses had circumstances and situations. You would find them. He was accused even by his own brother and sister of pride. That why would he elevate himself? Is he the only one to whom God speaks? And so people can look at you and see pride while what is living there is humility. Because the humility of Moses was not cowering in the corner. The humility of Moses was obedience to the hand of God. Humility is not shrinking yourself. 
Humility is standing in obedience to the directives and instructions of heaven. So when the Bible says, therefore humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, it is saying when God speaks a thing over you, walk in that thing. And there you would find humility. Humility is standing when people tell you to sit, but God has told you to speak up. Humility is, is walking into rooms and shaking them when it has to be shaken for the kingdom of heaven. Humility is not sitting in your house while the world is falling apart and doing nothing lest people look at you and say, who are you and why? How dare you speak? Humility for Jeremiah was letting go of the conception in his head that I'm too young to have these conversations. I'm too dumb to get in these rooms. I don't have their understanding or their experience. What reason do they have to listen to me? If he stayed and was disobedient, there would have been a resistance between him and God because he was being proud considering himself and not the directive of the Father. So when we talk about stepping into the mind of Christ, I was talking about this last week. So there is a man that sits in the middle of you called your soul that contains your mind, your soul, your spirit, um, your will, and your emotions. And when that mind receives information from the flesh, the tendency is to take that information to heart. When the Bible says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, it is saying, let your mind be directed, not by external circumstances that take place in the world that have caused you to think these are the patterns by which I ought to think. That if I'm going to get from A to B, this is the way by which to go. When God is calling for the people who are innovative, innovation is not building something new. The very definition of, it, of innovation is actually taking that which is and building it in a manner that is new. It is not making something new so much we spend time trying to do new things. But was this that there is no new thing under the sun. Innovation is taking what is and letting yourself not be led by existing patterns but by patterns that come from a higher realm. The reason we fall into the mistake and the error of pride is we spend far too much time considering ourselves, our qualities, our ability, our influence, our relationships. Do I know the right people to get to that room? Can I ask you, who did Joseph know? Who did David know? We spend so much trying, trying to carry ourselves into places and also then knocking ourselves or our ability to do what God has called us to do because we're looking at ourselves. The Bible says, let your light so shine. Sorry, just read the scripture, Matthew 5. verse 13 you are the salt of the earth but if salt loses its seasoning or its flavor how shall it be seasoned it is good then for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot by men but you are the light of this world a city set upon a hill nor do they take a light 
and put it under a basket but on to a light stand and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your father in heaven a lot of the reason why we do not let our light shine is we are worried one are we bright enough two what would happen if my light shines what condemnation might come upon me what insult what mockery we spend so much time considering ourselves and then we do what the world says and then we put our light under a basket because if I risk shining I risk condemnation but the purpose of your light shining is not for you it is not that you be glorified it is not that you become established it is not that you be lifted up it is not that people look at you and think oh my days how great is she your light is for the glorification of the father do not do heaven the disservice of your disobedience and I know that it's hard I know if we look at our circumstances look at look at everything going on right now the economy I mean, has been just just do that I won't use words he adds to that there's this new note dilemma I don't know if you've seen videos kind of things that are taking place in banks right now while people are trying to get hold of notes because there is desperate circumstances taking place in this nation desperate and we are often as a people praised for the fact that we we have a tenacity to just keep on we'll make light of everything we'll joke I wonder whether that joking is actually just being quiet and taking whatever comes your way and not having the cold the courage to stand up and actually speak these things are happening when in a matter of weeks we have the responsibility of standing up and speaking with our votes where it is essential that we actually use what God has given us to speak. But I don't want to complain too much about that. I think that the very worst version of the silence that we exhibit is how we, we bow to our former selves. How we accept who we are, who we've been, what we've done. We say we desire change and sometimes it hurts. You don't like when people call you out on your crap. It doesn't feel good. But somehow it doesn't feel bad enough for us to actually do anything about it. We'd rather be comfortable in our mess than actually stand up and be who we're supposed to be. Yeah, accept that addiction. Tell yourself this isn't okay. You go ahead and do it again. And we let ourselves be slaves to our circumstance and our situation. and accept these lies about ourselves more than we're ready to receive and accept what God has said about us. We are far more loyal to our deadness than we are to the life we've been offered. We haven't had the hunger to change. Yet. I desire 
requires a little bit too much requires a little bit too much of us requires a little bit too much searching and hungering and thirsting you're just not that hungry yet comfortable wish you could change but you're okay as you are it's one thing to not get to the place in life where you hate yourself and you just despise yourself but it's a whole different thing if you're just content and not passionate enough to actually change no one is saying that the change will be easy the change requires putting faith in what you cannot see what you have heard I know it's not easy. Feels like it's you're being told to do what is right and you know, you know in your heart what is right, but you haven't found the strength within yourself to do it. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, and it's so important that we understand the whole of Ephesians 4 is teaching us really the essence of this life. It is it is speaking to us about what he has called us to. And it says that he he set about five different categories of people whether it's the pastor the teacher the apostle the evangelist the prophet but he said that he set them aside and he set them for a certain reason that you the saints shall be equipped for the work now later on in the scripture he talks about what it is that you have been taught now I feel like a lot of us what we do is that we go and we read our Bibles or we come to church and we gain this information well enough that we can quote the scripture if I stood here and I hope in my heart if I ask anybody in this room to quote John 3 16 they could do it but the problem is that this and this is a Nigerian culture but it's also Christian one is in our education system we're taught far easier how to cram information than to actually internalize it that it becomes wisdom and we take to reading the Bible or to learning of Christ as if we are preparing for an exam this is not about how well you can quote in Ephesians 4 let me just quote it it says this from verse 20 but you have not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you Put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful loss and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness there are two things that are related when it talks about this it's not simply how you learned of Christ we're not here to learn about Jesus we are here to learn Jesus therefore it is not information about him and how he lived it is the identity and nature of him that we might become him everything if you go early in Ephesians 4 when it's talking about this equipping of the Saints it is for what purpose that we might grow into the full stature of Christ it might be yes an impossible notion that you would become perfect but I would like for us to dispel that idea in our minds you ever heard the saying that if you keep on falling short aim higher because if you aim higher at least your falling short will be closer to the goal so we need to dispel this notion that it is impossible to be like Christ we all say it we're all like ah well I'm not Jesus Jesus could 
forgive them I don't know that I can Jesus could love them in the midst of evil doing I don't know that I can but we need to learn to dispel it because the only way we put on the mind of Christ is to accept the notion and the possibility that we can actually be like Christ that is the goal and the moment you set your standard any lower you accept less walk with less be comfortable with less do less give less effort so Jesus says that you have been the Bible says here in Ephesians that you have been taught Christ so that you would be able to put off the old man it means that the way that you put off this old mind and you carry this new mind is that you don't just take the teachings about Christ but you take the teachings of Christ his person his identity his walk his thought pattern and every single day you are seeking him that you are learning him and that when you do that you have the grace and the ability to do the things that he did how do I forge this new mind if I'm content thinking in accordance with my old mind accepting what he says is impossible as impossible accepting the fact that you're this sinner you are always gonna be this sinner you're always gonna be this messy no one's gonna love you you're not good enough you're not smart enough you don't have the ability to go doing the good thing and the right thing for 24 hours who are you I know that if I speak to you one way you'll react exactly as the world tells you you're gonna react and if you keep on accepting that you never get better And I know it feels like a weight that probably weighs two times what you do is on your back. And the lie that the enemy wants to tell you is that you just, you're best off just laying there, being dead, falling into it. Because if he can stop you from calling on Christ, he can have you lay there dead forever. Bible says whoever whosoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved so you're in that situation you're in that room the world are putting these options in front of you you need to pay your rent to reality and they're telling you you just do this for us we'll sort out everything else and it feels like the only logical option in that moment remember Christ the only one that can save the only one that can propel you to your fullness in his ident an identity in him is the name of Jesus and every time it's not just that you cried out to him at the beginning of the week and then you go out through your life and the pressure comes and you bend and you wonder why when you cried out to him at the beginning of the week you don't have the strength for it We've got to call out to him every moment of every day. You've got to remember him whenever the pressure comes, when they're lying to you, when they're accusing you. And every single time, and you think that there's pressure, you've got to speak now. You've got to answer in your mind only has one solution and you don't know what to say but what they have told you. And in that moment, you cry out, Jesus. Because guess what? Even the demons obey him. Even they fear him. You can be who he said you are. You can be who he says you are. Wear Christ. Wear him every day. 
with him every moment of the day. Remember him. Cry out to him. Call out his name. He will change the way you think. He will change the way you see. He will change the way you live. He will change the way you make choices. But he is not a Sunday outfit. He is for every day. He's for every moment. He's for every circumstance. He's for every situation. And he who is able to save to the uttermost shall redeem you to the fullness of who you are. God, I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice to remember that they are not simply taught about you, but they are taught you. They are taught your personhood, they are taught your identity, they are taught your courage, they are taught your boldness, they are taught your love, they are taught your gentleness, your meekness, your humility, they are taught your courage, your strength, your might. They are taught your capacity to speak truth always. They are taught your righteousness, they are cloaked in it, dressed in it, drenched in it. every lie of the enemy is dispelled that they are no longer slaves to their circumstances no longer slaves to their minds they are no longer slaves to that addiction they are no longer slaves they are servants of Christ called under a much greater grace called under a much greater truth called under a much greater covenant that they might not see the ingredients lining up but what you offer them is far sweeter than that the world of Christ over the pattern of this world.